is an MBA worth it? Before you can answer that, there are many pros and cons to consider. Your qualifications, experience and aspirations play a big role in the decision. If you are applying as an international applicant, you may have some specific expectations from an MBA like the work permit application process after graduation. It's tough to answer the question with a simple yes-no answer. Why? Because you may be an engineer, doctor or finance professional and the dynamics are different for each profession. So in order to make this video relevant for applicants from multiple backgrounds, I thought it would be interesting to flip the question and ask when is an MBA not worth it? By analyzing the counter views, you might just get the answer you're looking for. We'll cover seven reasons when an MBA is not worth it. The first one is when your expectations are unclear. This is a situation when you know that you're not happy with the current job, but you don't really know what will make you happier. You have this vague idea that an MBA will do wonders for your career, but that's not good enough. There's a reason why business schools include the Why MBA essay in their applications. When you're not sure about what you really want from the experience, you'll probably not be happy after graduation. A B school is not the place to gain that clarity. In fact, with all that's happening at breakneck speed on campus, don't be surprised if there's more confusion than clarity after the program starts. The second reason when an MBA is not worth it is when your timing is wrong. When you apply too early or too late in your career, investing in an MBA may not be worthwhile. The average age of students in various countries and program formats like the two-year versus one-year MBA programs is quite consistent. If you don't fall in the 80 percentile range, no one will stop you from applying. But on the flip side, you may not get the most from the experience. For example, if you have 10 years of work experience, you may be better off looking at one-year programs such as IMD in Switzerland instead of the typical American two-year MBA format. Also remember that an MBA after 30 has its unique set of challenges. Reason number three is you have incorrect perceptions about what you're signing up for. There's nothing wrong in expecting a better job after an MBA. In fact, that's possibly the main reason why you're planning to empty your pockets and take on such a humongous education loan. Business schools are smart. They promote the fantastic salaries and jobs that their students have got. But have you seen any school promising jobs? Not really. Think about what you've done in those two years as an international MBA student and how much of it was directly related to the new job you're targeting. If you're aiming for a big career shift, ask yourself this. Apart from the theory that was covered in the class, was any of it of direct and practical relevance for your new employer? The disconnect begins when you start looking at B-Schools as job placement agencies instead of educational institutions. Reason number four when it's less about the degree and more of an escape route. Everyone has job problems. That's when MBA brochures start looking enticing. All those airbrushed, high-resolution images of attractive, smiling students give you hope. Moving on to number five, your choice of MBA programs is wrong. There's a mind-boggling choice of options to choose from. Each one is designed for professionals with various career trajectories and aspirations. When you target programs that have very little street credibility, the MBA will not be worth much. If you're hoping to give a major twist to your career, stick to full-time MBA programs. You could also get the country and B-School wrong. For instance, you might have a full scholarship from the Timbuktu School of Business, but sorry, it will not get you into McKinsey, Goldman Sachs or Google. International MBA programs cannot place you internationally, meaning in a completely different country. Your best option would be to get a job in the country of graduation or return home after you finish your MBA. Reason six, you're happy to embrace mediocrity. The value of an MBA is not just about the degree you'll get. It's also about who else was there in your class. When you get into a program that has mediocre students, the world outside will think you're mediocre as well. That's the reason why MBA graduates from top ranking B schools are viewed differently by hiring companies compared to those who've just paid their way through an unheard of MBA college in an unheard of country. It's all about the perception. Reason 7. Your post-MBA goals are too ambitious. Nothing stops you from assuming that an MBA will help you launch your million dollar venture. Your fertile imagination may also convince you that this will happen immediately after you finish your MBA. Sorry to burst your bubble, but when all you've done before your MBA is software programming, 
it'll be tough like hell for you to get a front office job in mergers and acquisitions in a bulge bracket investment bank. It's good to dream big, but if you attach the entire worth of your MBA degree to impractical dreams, you've already made it worthless. So those are our seven reasons. The bottom line is this. If all you have is a headache, don't sign up for plastic surgery. If you've read Beyond the MBA Hype, you know what you've covered here is only the tip of the iceberg. There are many other aspects that you need to be aware of before deciding whether an MBA is right for you at this stage of your career. If you're still unsure, send us an email and we'll help you with some ideas on whether it's worth it or not. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share and comment. It'll make us happy. Let us know what topic to cover next. And don't forget to subscribe for more informative videos from MBA Crystal Ball.